Yeah, if you click, so be careful, uh, click on the mouse symbol, and that stops it from acting like a mouse. Otherwise, you got to use the left and right click. There. Now you can use the top left and the top right buttons to advance. Hey, guys. And uh, how do you click with the mouse? Uh, so if you activate the mouse, it's the bottom left and left click. Oh, okay. There you go. So... This is a drawing of what a black hole looks like. And in this case, it's a rotating black hole. So basically, all of the black holes are this way. You can, this explains different parts of it. Like, for example, you can see the ring is this way and going behind the black hole, but the, um, the black hole of gravity is warping the light so you can see the back side of the ring on the bottom and the top too. You can see that it is spinning from the front on the left to the right because the right heel is brighter so that means it's traveling towards you and thus has more energy. Mm. Uh, this is the photon ring, which is the place where the photons can go in orbit around the black hole. It's an unstable orbit, so they, if, if, the, if the photons go inside this, they will forever go in, they can't go back out. If, if it stays outside of that line, they will eventually escape. And yes, please. Oh, so since when when a black hole doesn't rotate, it's called a Schwarzschild black hole, and it has um, it doesn't really have an accretion disk. It just has matter orbiting in various directions, and when it is rotating, it actually does have a disk, and that's and the disk is um, it's, um, if the black hole was like this, this was the axis of rotation. The that would be what the accretion disk is, and that is because of an um, effect predict predicted by general relativity called flame dragging, which basically just makes all matter that's not on the accretion disk to slowly move so that it will eventually go there. Okay. So that's black hole in space. That's what the accretion disk would look like in terms of light coming off of it? The, that small blue dot is the black hole. And this is just a, a star or something that goes close to it. You can see how it... Oh, how it suck it in. Got it. How it doesn't really suck in much. It just breaks the ball so it goes inside the roach. Right. So cool. That was a simulation, or is that? Uh, yeah, so that's what we used. Yeah. Okay. So black holes are mostly created by a neutron star collapse, which occurs at about three solar masses.
right, photons don't have photons don't have mass, but they have momentum. And due to the this is the formula, the Wittgenstein extension of e equals m c squared. Um, this basically shows that they have energy; they can be sucked in and everything. This also means that Kugelblitz, German for ball lightning, uh, can occur. Probably wouldn't occur naturally, but it's just a theoretical thing. Um, basically, because photons have energy, they they can also make a black hole because of mass energy equivalence. Do they? Do they know what conditions would lead to like? So that's a theoretical thing that we haven't yeah. seen yet. But but do they think the conditions would ever be right for that to actually occur? It would need an incredible amount of light there. It probably wouldn't happen. Okay. It's a and then I think Chris had a question. Uh, I thought Kugelblitz was a the inverse of a black hole. Am I just thinking of something else? You mean white hole? I I thought that it was. Yeah, it looks like on here what, what Alexander's describing is, uh, is correct. It's so much uh, heat, light, or radiation that's so intense, it becomes self-trapped and forms its own event horizon. Um, when we're talking about white holes, white holes are places of attractive gravity, not quite what you would expect, but the event horizon is in the infinite past instead of infinite future like normal black holes have. So if something fell into a white hole, it would actually experience that the white hole would just not be there when it got to the event horizon. Okay. So every black hole has an event horizon. And except for very small singularities, they're called naked singularities, which are on the order of the Planck length. And also, if a black hole could spin fast enough, which we haven't observed a black hole spinning that fast, it could actually rotate quickly enough that the event horizon would shrink down to the singularity. As as black holes spin faster, the event horizon actually splits into two, called the inner and the outer one. And as it rotates faster, the inner one shrinks down towards the singularity. The outer one expands outwards until eventually it maxes out at, at I think, four and a half times the normal uh, radius for non-spinning ones. So now I will perform a derivation for the event horizon using physics that we probably comprehend. We start off with gravitation, and you take the integral of that. And at that point, even you you get split results based based on which um, which um, frame of reference you have. So.
would have an event horizon of about 2,960 or so meters and a black hole. Also, black holes would have the same uh, gravitational attraction as the normal matter would if it wasn't in the black hole. If, like our sun, for example, turned into a black hole, which it wouldn't happen normally, so it would the only thing that would change was that we wouldn't receive the light from it, but we wouldn't just get sucked into it suddenly. Uh, in fact, uh, less things would fall into the new black hole than it would have been before, because the black hole takes up a smaller area than the original sun did. So things that would have hit the sun before might just miss. Also, black holes have very few properties to them. Mass, angular momentum, and electrical charge. Okay, this is an example of gravitational redshift. Basically, if you were on the surface of the sun and you emitted <coughs> a laser beam of purple, by, by the time, I guess this is Earth, Earth would see it as yellow. Because the light is climbing out of the gravitational field here and it's losing energy. It wouldn't lose energy like normal um, objects would, which is slowing down, since it always travels at the speed of light. And instead it would lose energy in the form of frequency from E equals HF. And one way to think about this intuitively is that imagine one person's emitting a, a green light, a 600 terahertz, and which is at the surface of, like near a black hole or something, for example. And someone else is, that is far away saw the light. It, and the light would be at 400 kilohertz, which is red. The, this means that you would actually see only two thirds of the, of the wavelength, really. But the wavelength isn't just disappearing. In, instead, what's happening is that for one, every one second on the, for the person that emitted the green light, one and a half seconds are passing for the person that saw the red light. So, and the Einsteinian group probably get into this. The gravity is caused by time dilation in Einsteinian physics. Instead, it's instead of just gravity. Oh, so if if some person really wanted to fall into a black hole. You, you would face a number of hurdles. First one is there wasn't any one of them nearby. Second one is that you would probably miss. And but if you did actually aim for it, some number of things would happen. One of them is that tidal effects, which actually I'm going to get into later. So, well, basically. As you fall towards the black hole, your speed would increase, but when you start getting near the speed of light, the relativistic effects start being significant, and you would actually start slowing down from the perspective of someone watching. Also, oh, okay, so, Time dilation increases very quickly once you get to near the speed of light. As oh yeah, this 
is the equation for time dilation. Basically, this is time initial. This is the velocity compared to the, well, the velocity of light. This is the minus. So when you're traveling at like 90% of the speed of light, this would be 0.9 squared divided by 1. And um, you would probably have like about two. Right, well, you would still experience less time. And, and once you start getting very close to the speed of light, the, the time you increases, uh, the time you experience is, starts very quickly going to near zero. And, and then it just starts being about how you go like 99.99% of the speed of light. And you're, but, well, basically as you, as you increase in velocity close to the speed of light, your momentum approaches infinity. And, and since the velocity can't increase too much, your, your mass starts increasing as well. And basically, you start you gaining energy from the black hole in that case. And I might explain this later, but I don't remember if I do, so I'm just going to explain it now. There is something called the Penrose mechanism in Wales. A person, or a, a particle, can gain energy from a black hole by going through the ergosphere in a specific manner. The ergosphere is basically an area near the event, near the outer event horizon, and and that only works for rotating black holes. What happens is that you start taking energy from the rotational energy of the black hole, so you, the black hole just doesn't rotate as much afterwards. It wouldn't ever not work, it wouldn't ever stop rotating, but you, it would just decrease and you get less energy mm -hmm. because it has less angular momentum. The maximum energy from the black hole you could gain from this is 29%, which is actually a lot when you consider that mass is proportional to the energy um, multiplied by the speed of light squared, basically. Um, okay, so as your time sl slows down, you would experience everything else to be going by faster, which would increase as you got new different lights. You would be traveling at the speed of light if you ever hit the event horizon. And since it's, you can't travel the speed of light, this is explained by you would just travel slower and eventually you would just, it would take you an infinite amount of time from the perspective of the rest of the universe for you to reach the event horizon. But from your perspective, you, you could just pass through the event horizon without any troubles except like the universe would already end by the time you did that. So. So, uh, so aside from from time, like that, the whole issue with relativity and time, your your physical body would, in theory, survive. Yes, for large enough black holes, okay. um, because that's from tidal effects. Basically, the that's the difference in the gravitational attraction between the part of you that's closest to the black hole and the part of you that's farthest away. And with large enough uh, differences, you would just get squished. Right. So, so the acceleration due to gravity, the acceleration due to gravity from, from moving into the black hole wouldn't kill you. Well, not directly. Like right? if you were just accelerating, if the, your whole body was just accelerating in a vacuum at like, a thousand meters a second squared, like it wouldn't. You wouldn't really like. 
die from it. I guess that's true. Your whole body would be affected by the gravity waves. Yeah. Huh. The the difference would be is from from small black holes there was a large difference from the attraction between your feet and your head if you like pointing towards it. Like for large black holes, tidal effects were actually quite small and you would survive keep going through the event horizon. Hmm. Uh, basically what happens in tidal effects are that you would get stretched out. You would basically become taller and also your your width would decrease hmm. because like this part's aiming down and this part's aiming a little bit to the left too. So. Gotcha. And basically, your even your particles would also get. But also, this there was also Hawking radiation, which is basically what happens when. Okay, uh, that to explain this, a vacuum isn't really empty space; it's the lowest energy state. And there was lots of motion there, and including every so often two particles pop into existence, matter and antimatter counterparts, and then they annihilate themselves. But if one of the particles gets close, gets, is, okay, if the two particles are real close to the black hole and only one of them goes in, the other one can escape, and due to conservation of energy, the black hole would lose energy, and that particle would go out. But as you approach the black hole and your time slowed down, you would experience that particle hitting you.